Hello, and welcome to Hawk Talk Sports. I'm your host, Dan Motto. And I'm Phil Minatolo. NFL media insider Ian Rappaport reported Monday, per a source informed of the situation, that the Raiders fired their head coach over the phone. Oakland fell to 0-4 on Sunday after another embarrassing loss, this time a 38-14 pummeling at the hands of the Miami Dolphins at Wembley Stadium in London. Fox Sports' Jay Glazer first reported the news, and the team confirmed the firing Tuesday afternoon. Hired prior to the 2012 season, Allen was 8-28 in his two seasons and four games into the 2014 campaign. Oakland had lost nine straight games dating back to the 2013 season before Sunday's contest with Miami. Rappaport reported it would take a meltdown against the Dolphins for Raiders management to terminate Allen after four weeks, but Sunday's lopsided contest reached that level. The team announced Tuesday it has promoted offensive line coach Tony Sperano to interim head coach. The decision comes one day after Allen was fired four games into his third season in Oakland. Tony Sperano has a strong presence in this organization, Raiders general manager Reggie McKenzie said in a release posted by the team. His experience and leadership qualities will serve the team well in helping reach the goal for everyone here, which is to win football games, which they might not. 0-16. On Monday night, the Patriots were blown out by the Kansas City Chiefs. Coming off one of the team's ugliest losses in the Bill Belichick era, quarterback Tom Brady acknowledged that his struggling offense won't find an easy fix in time for Sunday night's showdown with a Bengals team undefeated, allowing a league-low 11 points per game. Brady was off kilter from wire to wire against the Chiefs defense that stymied the air attack and drummed up two picks off the star passer. Miscommunication with wideout Julian Edelman led to the first interception. The second, a pick six to Hussein Abdullah, was a head scratcher that saw Brady completely misread the field. Stuck behind a struggling offensive line, Brady isn't throwing with anticipation, a problem compounded by a receiving corpse absent of difference makers. Whether or not Brady looks scared to death in the pocket, as former teammate Rodney Harrison claimed Tuesday, it's no secret that he's facing new frontiers of duress. Just three quarterbacks have averaged a lower time to throw this season than Brady's 2.3 seconds per pro football focus. The site points out that when Brady holds the ball for more than 2.5 seconds, he's completing an NFL worst 40.5% of his passes. Phil, we've seen some pretty bad football play this year. That we have. The Raiders so. and the Jaguars are both 0-4 at this point. Who do you think is most likely to go 0-16 this year, if any? Well, Daniel, I think the Jaguars. They don't have a good receiving core for a rookie quarterback. No. They lost Mercedes Lewis for the year, who was probably their highest paid player. And um, Toby Gerhardt isn't the answer at running back. Mm -hmm. And I don't know one player on their defense, but oh, yeah. they're just a low income, low marketable team. Yeah, so and then... It's terrible. Yeah, and then the Raiders, same thing. 0-4. Oh, they'll, they'll get a win. Not much talent, but they'll get a win. You're right. They have more talent on offense. But with Matt the whole, Schaub. they just fired their head coach, so they're just in shambles right now. Yeah, but now he's going to do Jeremy Fadden and Mojo in the Wildcat. Call him. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. All right. And boys and girls. And then moving on to injuries. Okay. A couple of notables from this past week. Carson Palmer. Who he's on my fantasy don't team. Don't know if he's going to be playing. He had his bye week this week, so maybe he'll be back. But okay. So, following a Jets loss to the Lions this past week, Geno Smith was hearing it from the crowd. They chanted, yeah. "We want Vic" the whole game. Yep. And Rex wouldn't put him in. And you saw after the game, Geno had some choice words for the Jets fans themselves. So, what do you think? Is going to go what's going to happen with the quarterback situation in New York. All right, last year he was a rookie quarterback and he went eight and eight. And this year he's off to a rough start, probably the toughest starting schedule in the NFL. They have the Chargers, the Broncos, Broncos and the Patriots next. So it's not just put on his shoulders, it's New York, so they all put it on him. But I think you need to give the guy a chance. Vic is 31. I don't think he's going to get them a ring. He doesn't have weapons. Decker's been hurt and on and off the field. We just haven't had the answer on offense. I feel like Vic would just give you some excitement at least, some kind of change. They've put him in some plays, like a few Wildcat, and he's looked terrible. Well, let him be the starting quarterback in the think, game and see what happens. I don't, I don't know. Then you're not, you can't let Geno Smith grow. 
There's yeah. no way a quarterback grows if you take him out and then you want to say, when Vic does bad, oh, let me put Geno back in. Yeah. And clearly Rex he would believes be, in Geno. He'd be mentally yeah. torn. Since the Carolina Panthers decided to part ways with Steve Smith to save money, Steve Smith promised that there would be blood and guts all over the field in his week four matchup with his former team. The most surprising aspect of Steve Smith's performance against the Panthers was that it didn't include taunts or bluster. Smith opted to punish the Panthers through his play on the field, and by the end of the afternoon, the 35-year-old receiver had made a definitive statement. Smith burned his former team with seven catches for 139 yards and two touchdowns, leading the Baltimore Ravens to a 38-10 victory on Sunday. Smith spent 13 seasons with Carolina before he was released during the offseason in a cost-cutting move, proving he still got a knack for making the big play. Smith scored twice in the second quarter to help put Baltimore, now 3-1, in front 21-7 at halftime. Thanks for watching Hawk Talk Sports.